I for one was very excited to find out about the return of the Chaparral 2J for Gran Turismo 4 GT7. Of course it's been an iconic car in the franchise, despite being absent from GT Sport, and both in Gran Turismo games and the real world, it's been slightly OP. Of course the car is most famous for its fans, what gives it its massive downforce and also makes it look like a giant washing machine. But those fans were ingenious for the time and meant when it turned up at Can-Am in 1970 it immediately qualified multiple seconds faster than anything else and was just banned after two races. Not that it actually saw any success or won those races due to unreliability. Those fans that created the downforce were extremely powerful and as a result they didn't just suck in air they sucked in grass to the engine, bits of mud that had been thrown onto the track, debris from other cars, small children, that kind of thing. But brief history lesson over, what is the 2J like in GT7? Because like most people, I'm sure you'll get the chance to drive the car before you actually own it, due to it being a prize car for getting all gold in the last set of mission challenges. And in one of those mission challenges, you have to drive the 2J through a field of other classic race cars. And let's be honest, unless you're some sort of driving god, that mission probably took a few attempts, because in GT7 the 2J is quite the handful. With the way the fans generate their downforce, it doesn't really matter what speed you're doing, so you can take immense amount of speed into slower corners, but once the grip is gone, it is gone. It will violently snap sideways and you may stand a chance in a slower corner of recovering it but if you're going faster than about 70 miles an hour you can pretty much forget it. Now of course it must be said this is driving with all assists off except ABS. You can very much tame the car using counter steering assistance. I think that is the best thing just to calm the inputs of the car and control if you get a bit of oversteer on the way out of a corner. But in general, driving this thing, especially in its stock guise, is an exercise in delicacy and precision. As you can see from the footage, I first took it out stock on a race at Daytona, just to try it out beyond the mission challenge once I actually own the car to get more of a feel for it. And you do learn to tame the oversteer and only drive it to the limit of its grip. And somewhat out of slow corners, the stock gearbox actually helps because you only have three gears, which means the first two are very, very long, so it can be a bit sluggish coming out of corners. First gear goes to 110 miles an hour, but of course, that helps not to overwhelm the rear tyres. Although it's not just under power and with sharp turning that you need to be careful with a stock 2J, because it found new ways to catch me out during my race at Daytona. Coming round the lap for the first time, about to start my second braking into the first corner, it did dive a lot under brakes, the rear went a bit light, and as we've established by now, once the rear goes, you're probably going to have a crash. But the question is, can you tame it? Can you actually enjoy driving the 2J and get it in a place where you're comfortable to go racing in it? Because I imagine after doing that mission challenge or just taking it out for the first time after you own it if you don't touch the car, some may be put off. So first off I just did a few basic upgrades based on instinct really. I fitted the fully customizable transmission which gets you two extra gears and makes the three speed gearbox now a five speed. I lowered the ride height and stiffened the springs just to control those body movements because it really lost its composure when you have to counter stick. It was throwing itself about all over the place and we just needed to calm that down a bit. And that did help. It was a lot easier to catch a slide once it would let go. The corner speed was still there of course, but the acceleration was better thanks to having those two extra gears. So it was an improvement, but it was still far from an easy car to drive. Which brings me on to what was my main concern with the 2J in GT7, and that just surrounds its general usefulness. Are you actually going to be able to 
use the car competitively, because of course, it has been OP in the past of the franchise, and will you actually get some mileage out of it, even just because you enjoy driving it? Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, it has a very high PP level from stock. Once you slap some racing soft tyres on it, it's knocking on the door of 900 performance points. But then again, that's perhaps not surprising, considering it only weighs about 800 kilograms and has almost 700 horsepower from stock. Although you can't actually tune the power to go any higher than that, not that I think you'd want to. Because what we're going to do is detune the car and my target was to get it to the 800 pp level and see how it fared there because at the moment that's the highest performance point level that have events available through the world circuits so i could actually enter the car and see how it did i kept my tuning and did a few adjustments from before but to get that pp down i switched to racing hard tires limited the power all the way to 70 percent and added some ballast so it's now weighing over 900 kilograms and to top it off i tuned the transmission to the level of power but now with 450 horsepower is this a car transformed well almost it's much much easier to drive you can get in a nice flow with it it's still pretty unforgiving if you push it too far but it's much easier to get to the limit and get to a place where you can drive it a bit more consistently. I did a 10 lap race, a couple of them in fact, just because I was enjoying driving the car, for the World Touring Car 800 series in the World Circuits, and it was enjoyable. I only had one off in each of the two races, so you do definitely get used to the car and its handling. But let's not get it twisted here. It may be detuned, but it's still plenty quick enough and in both the races, I finished first by a decently comfortable margin. So that brings us on to the final part of this video. Is it still competitive at that performance point level compared to other cars around that 800 pp mark? As far as the AI pp restricted races goes, you should have no problem. But the final experiment is one of lap time where I'd be taking the Deep Forest in four different cars, all around 800pp. Of course, the Chaparral, a fully tuned up road car, I'm using here an AMG GT Black Series with 1000 horsepower, a Group 2 car, and the Porsche 917 Living Legend. All cars would be running on racing hard tyres, which help them all get to a similar PP level, and would have five laps of Deep Forest, to set the fastest time possible. So let's start with the road car, a fully tuned up 1000 horsepower AMG GT Black Series. Of course it struggled for traction out of the slower corners, it would go sideways but it was all fairly predictable and it was a monster in a straight line hitting 215 miles an hour before braking for the first corner. And speaking of the brakes, they impressed actually with how well they slowed the car down for that first corner and for the final hairpin. Two very big braking zones going faster than any of the other cars, but I never once outbrake myself. The main issue was just trying to get the nose of the car in and then being careful with the power on the way out, but it's a respectable benchmark. But now we move to the polar opposite with the Group 2 car. Of course, it's basically in its stock guise with racing hard tyres to get to the 800 pp level, so running about 530 horsepower and weighing in at 1100 kilos. And as you'd expect, it was much better through the corners, much more downforce, you can just carry much more speed, you can be earlier on the throttle, but it was severely limited in terms of top speed, which does matter here at Deep Forest. It wasn't even reaching 170 miles an hour, some 45 less than the AMG. But overall, it was a very nice car to drive, as you'd expect. Now, moving on to the 917 Living Legend. This was somewhere between the two, as you'd perhaps expect. It was a lot less leery than the AMG, had a bit more downforce, but wasn't quite reaching the same kind of speeds on the straight although it was still reaching the double ton before the first corner. 
being mid edged it was perhaps a bit harder when the slides did come, but overall it wasn't too bad, and it had a very good balance of straight line speed, braking performance and cornering ability for Deep Forest, and considering the PP level, it did very well here. And then finally I jumped back in the 2J. Of course I'm more used to the car now so my running was a bit more consistent, although I did still get caught out by overcorrecting a slide a few times, which didn't really help. But it was decent on the straight hitting about 185 miles an hour in its Dean June guys, which is still very good considering it's running less power than the Super GT Nissan. And once again, the speed you can take through the slower corners was insanely impressive. You just don't expect it, but you just got to trust that the car will do the business. And then of course, be careful on the exit of the corners. So overall, how did the cars do? Now, I'm not going to claim that I'm fully up to speed with GT7's physics yet. I'm sure I still will get better, so there's definitely room for improvement in these times. But unsurprisingly, the road car was the slowest, setting a 125.7. What was surprising though, was the Super GT car was only two tenths faster with a 125.5. Of course it would be different on a more technical track, but with the long straights at Deep Forest that really hampered the GTR hit. And it probably helped the 917 go over two seconds faster. For the same PP, that's very very good, it did a 123.3. And quite frankly, the 2J didn't feel that fast. I didn't think I was making that much time up in the corners to make up the deficit on the Porsche's straight line speed. But as it transpires, yeah, I didn't expect that either. Of course, it's more difficult to get the speed out of it than it is with most other cars, but it's certainly rewarding when you get it right. And it seems as though not much has changed. The 2J is still OP. So if you take the time to master this car, it will reward you, especially when we eventually get the certain time trial where you can use this car, I'm sure it's going to absolutely dominate some leaderboards. But all of that, I guess, remains to be seen, but by all means, give this car a shot. And there we have it, that rounds out my first ever car review on Gran Turismo. Let me know if you want to see more, I plan to do more in this series, but that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, have a good day.